OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here on a Friday afternoon. Uh, I really appreciate that. Um, today, I'm going to talk about Creative Commons licenses, public domain, and copyright. My name is Diana Vera Alba. I am an OTAN subject matter expert. I'm also a faculty, ESL faculty, and OER coordinator at San Diego College of Continuing Education in San Diego. Um, so a little bit about myself. I am an online instructor and trainer. Uh, I've been doing this since 2012. Um, I've taught in the modalities of distance ed, hybrid, high flex, and online, fully online courses. I'm a trainer, uh, online faculty mentor at my district, as well as an OER and CAPE coordinator. Uh, I'm also a Canvas course design trainer, accessibility trainer, OER ZTC trainer, and here um, also with OTAN as a subject matter expert. So in my free time, I do enjoy uh, gardening, photography, and I love animals. So this is Gordy, one of my dogs. Um, before we get started, I do want to find out how familiar you are with using OERs. Um, so if you can please type in chat, uh, type number one, if you are not familiar with OERs, type number two, if you are somewhat familiar with OERs, and type number three, if you are very familiar with OERs. So this will help me keep the pace of your interests so I can see where you are at right now in your learning. Okay, wonderful. So we have a lot of ones, we have some twos and 2.5s, that's great. Um, so hopefully this will be beneficial for you, not super overwhelming. Um, I will try to keep it as simple as possible because it is a very complex topic. Um, so throughout the presentation, I'll have lots of examples, including videos. Um, and um, so let's go ahead and get started with that. And before we actually get started, I do want to preface this presentation um, because we are going to talk about, um, I'm going to, or I'm going to present on some legal uh, topics. I am not an attorney and I cannot give you legal advice but I am Creative Commons certified. So I have that linked out if you're interested in what that means. Um, I'll tell you a little bit, Creative Commons um, are a set of licenses, uh, six OER, uh, Creative Commons licenses that designate materials as OER. Um, so I am certified with Creative Commons and copyright uh, public domain fair use and the licenses were part of my training, but again, I am not an attorney. All right, so let's go ahead and continue. So today, the agenda topics uh, we're going to look at are the char characteristics of OERs. We're going to look at the five R's that um, define an OER. We're going to look at the types of Creative Commons licenses. Um, we're also going to look at the differences between OERs and open resource, uh, uh, free resources. Um, what is copyright, public domain versus open resources. Um, and then we're going to identify some OERs. We're going to look at the licenses. And when you are doing your own search online, one of the best places to look at if you don't see the license clearly on the home page of the website is looking at the terms of use. Okay. And I have a couple self care time uh, throughout the presentation. And when we get there, you'll see the screen. Um, it'll, it'll be um, I'll stop. I'll stop and pause for a moment to see if you do want to take a break, and if you want to power through, we'll power through. Um, but I do have those two breaks available for you. Again, this is a um, an hour and thirty minute presentation, uh, but there is a lot of material to cover. Okay, 
All right. So first of all, let's look at the definition of what a, an OER is. So OER stands for Open Educational Resources, and these are teaching, learning, and research resources that reside in the public domain or have been released under an intellectual property license that permits sharing, accessing, repurposing, including for commercial purposes and collaborating with others. Okay, so notice there is some emphasis on some of these phrases. So the first one is reside in the public domain. Okay, so these are materials that are typically in a uh, website. They can be in a repository, like a large library of OERs. Um, Merlot is one of them. You might have heard of Merlot or OER Commons. So they reside in, a pub, in the public domain, so somewhere where we can all access. They're also licensed under an intellectual property license. So that is the Creative Commons licenses that I mentioned earlier, and I'll go over those with you as well. And these licenses permit sharing. This is really important. Accessing right? We need to be able to access those uh, resources for them to be open. Uh, we may need to be able to repurpose those materials as well. So I need to be able to share them with my students, maybe share them with colleagues, and collaborate with others, right? So um, right now, I'm in a project where I'm collaborating with my um, fellow faculty on an OER resource, and we are actually revising and rewriting some portions of that resource. So I should be able to have access, repurpose, and the right to share and collaborate with others. Okay. Now, this definition is from the US Office of Education from their 2010 plan. Um, in their 2020 plan, this definition was not included because it it was assumed that everyone knew what OERs are. So I am re-including uh, that definition because many of us still, you know, are we've heard of them, but we're not quite sure what they are, okay? Diana? Yes. So can we go back to the definition for a second? Um, mm -hmm. Austin had a couple of questions on the repurpose. Mm -hmm. So um, question repurpose how? And then the second question, is the repurposing strictly defined or completely open? If it's an open resource, then it's completely open. So repurposing can me sh mean sharing as is, or as in my case with my uh, grant grantees that we are rewriting or remixing uh, that original resource. So I can repurpose, I'm repurposing it to um, match my student population because we liked this resource but there were things about it that just didn't fit and so we are repurposing we are remixing and we are revising that resource does that make sense i think we're good uh, okay Diana, yeah all Thanks. right so we're going to look at this a little bit more. We're going to look at this definition with some examples. And um, so we need to talk, when we talk about OERs, we need to discuss the five R's because repurpose, reuse, revise, remix, redistribute, and retain. Those are the five R's of OERs. That means that in order for a resource to be considered a true OER, they must contain these five key points, okay? So let's look at the right-hand side here. So revise. So if a resource is a true OER, then we have the right to revise that resource. So content can be adapted, adjusted, modified, or altered, right? We've all used books and resources that we, we think, wow, this book is great. Maybe about 70% of it is great. 
but 30% of it, oh, I can't use. I wish it had this. I wish it included this. So with an OER, you have the right to adapt that resource and um, make it useful for your course. You also have the right to remix. So the original or revised content can be combined with other content to create something new. Okay, so if you like that resource, let's say you like two or three resources and you like one unit from one book, another unit from another book, a third unit from a, another book, you can remix those. If it's a true OER, you can remix those three resources to create a whole new resource. The next one is redistribute. So with this, um, are you can copy you can make copies of the content and they can be shared with others in its original revised or remixed form okay so you want the right to redistribute on the left hand side we'll start at the top with reuse and this gives you the right to um, reuse the content in its unaltered form or in its altered form as well. So you can use it in your course. Um, you can talk about it on in a presentation. Um, so many uses for reuse. The last one is retain. So you should have the right to retain a copy of the resource. You should uh, be able to archive it or own copies of the content. You, if you use an LMS, um, you can upload that resource to your Canvas or Google Classroom. Um, so those are the five R's and resources that contain the five R's along with the Creative Commons license are considered OERs. Any questions? Yeah, Diana, we have a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. So from Duran. Um, I think this is up back on the redistribute um, item. So the, mm -hmm. her question is, is it just make copies or put it back up online for free dis distribution? Both. So you have the right to, so for example, the book or the resource that I'm working on, I'm remixing it. So I'm changing it. I'm adding some of my own resources to it. I'm going to add it to my Canvas Commons. I'm going to share it with my faculty members. And I'm also going to upload it to one of the repositories. I'm going to upload it to um, a Creative Commons website. So yes, it's both retain, I mean, be, both make a copy and also you can upload it to your site. Okay, great. And um, <clears throat> Dr. Broussard asked about, um, will the slides be available? So um, yes. at, yeah, at OTAN, um, we are doing, the, we are making the recordings. Um, we do video remedi remediation as a part of our um, process for making the videos available publicly. So it will take a little time to get the video available um, um, on the OTM website. But Diana, um, are you sharing the slides separately or how are you yes. handling that? Yes, at the end of the presentation, I can um, share them in a chat. Okay, great. Share the link in chat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, she says, or, sorry, Dr. Prasad says, uh, fantastic, thank you. Um, and then Austin has a question. Um, so this means with the back on the five R's. So this means that I could take parts of the OER and mix it with my school's curriculum books, correct? Correct. As long as your school's curriculum books are not copyrighted materials, because then that's when we run into problems. Um, so as long as your curriculum uh doesn't have to be an OER. It can be a free resource and uh, copyright free resource. Then you can uh, remix it without violating copyright law. Okay, thank you, Diana. We're good for questions at the moment. Okay, all right. So let's go ahead and continue. And so these are the five Creative Commons licenses.
Um, so you'll see this barometer here on the left hand side, um, the licenses at the top are the least restrictive so they're identified by the green section here. And as you go down the list, it starts getting yellow, right? Kind of like a traffic light, like warning, something's happening here. There's some kind of restriction here. And then the most restrictive, restrictive licenses are towards the bottom. Um, so these have some, you notice the circle with the slash through it, right? So there's some not, some things you cannot do, okay? Um, so let me go over these really quick. Um, so they're identified by symbols, and also uh, the symbols are um, defined here by acronyms, and then the definition is in the last column. So the first license is CC BY, and this license lets you distribute, remix, tweak, or change, and build upon the original work, even commercially, as long as you credit the original creator. This is the most accommodating of licenses offered, okay? So all of these licenses have the CC BY, so CC stands for Creative Commons. The BY is by attribution. That means you have to give the original author credit for their work somewhere in your presentation or somewhere in your book or revised material. You know, something like this was adapted from Diana Vera's Alba's book on blah, 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 right? And then, of course, you will take credit for the new revised work as well. So the next license is CC by SA, and this is Creative Commons by Attribution, Share Alike. So this license lets you remix, tweak, and build upon the original work, even for commercial purposes, as long as you credit the original work and license your new creations under the identical terms. This license is often compared to copy left, free, and open resource software licenses. All new works based on the work should carry the same license so any derivatives, which are changes, will also allow commercial use. This is the license used by Wikipedia. Okay, so with this license, identical to the first license, but they added the share alike. And that means that they want you to use this ex same exact license on your revised work. So that if they are sharing it with you, they want you to share it with others. It also saves the integrity of the original author's work of how they want their uh, resource to be shared. Okay, they want it to be shared alike with everyone else. Any questions so far? So Diana, <clears throat> Harold is asking if we can get a copy of this uh, license breakdown. So you yes. did mention that you will share the slides at the end of today. So yes. this will be included in the slides, right? Correct. And all of the images that I have are linked out. This particular image was created by another OER coordinator at my district um, from Mesa College. And um, so if you get to the slides and you click on image here, see how it's underlined? It's a direct link to the picture. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So the next license is CC by ND, and this stands for Creative Commons by Attribution Non Derivatives. So this license allows for redistribution, commercial and non commercial, as well uh, as long as it's passed along unchanged and in whole with credit to the original work. Okay, so now we're seeing, we're not seeing I can remix or tweak, right? We don't see that in this. That's what the non-derivatives means. So you can use the resource exactly as is without making any changes. So if you see this license, equal means the same. You have to keep it the same. Um, again, you can use it for commercial purposes. 
but uh, commercial and non-commercial purposes, but you cannot make any changes to the work. It has to stay in its original form. Any questions on this license? Diana, just to say, um, I actually tracked down the chart in your <laughs> in your um, Canvas course, and I put the link to the page um, in the chat if people want to look at that chart directly. But this is the beauty of OER, right? Being able to find mm -hmm. these these resources available online, um, take a look at them, um, share them, and then do all the all the things that you want to do with an OER. So, mm -hmm. yep. Thank you, Anthony. Yes. <laughs> Perfect example. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So let's go to the next license. And this is CC by NC. And this stands for Creative Commons by Attribution Non Commercial. So with this license, you can remix, tweak, and build upon the original work non commercially. Your new works must be non commercial and acknowledge the original work but you don't have the license, you don't have to license your der derivative works on the same terms. So this one is missing the SA, right? But what it's not missing, or yes, what it is missing is the right to make a profit off of it, okay? So that's what this symbol is here. So you can use it, you can change it, uh, you don't have to use the same license as the original author, which I always thought this was strange because that could lead to um, someone thinking that they can make a profit off it or uh, they can. No, never mind. <laughs> I just confused myself. But anyways, this is the license I least like for some reason. Um, because that part to me, uh, to many is confusing. Like I cannot make a profit, but I can change it. Um, so yes, that is non-commercial. Okay. Uh, any questions on that license? I think we're good, Diana. Okay. So the next license is CC by NCSA, and this stands for Creative Commons by Attribution, Non-Commercial, Share Alike. So this license lets you remix, tweak, and build upon the original work non-commercially, as long as you credit the original work and license your new creations under the identical term. Okay, so we can not make a profit, okay? We can change the resource, we can remix it, we can uh, mix it with our own materials, as long as we use the identical license on that new resource that you create. Okay. Any questions on this license? All right. And the last one is the most restrictive license, okay? And this is CC BY and CND, which stands for Creative Commons by Attribution, Non-Commercial, No Derivative Works. So with this license, um, you can only download the original work and share it with others as long as you give credit to the original author. You cannot change the original work, so no remixing, no changing in any way, or you cannot use it commercially. So basically with this type of resource, you can only use it as is. You can teach with it, you can share it with a colleague, you can even upload it to your Canvas LMS account or your Google Sites or your Google Classroom without any changes, no changes to that work. And you have to, anytime you add anything to a website, you have to add the license. So I, um, just to be clear on that. Any questions? Diana, yes, there is a question from Austin. Mm -hmm. So basically like a citation in a paper or a PowerPoint, correct? Correct. Mm hmm. So that's what that's basically what the licenses do. They are citations in in the 
OER world, we call them attributions, but they're, they are just like citations. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't see any other questions at the moment. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go ahead and continue. So we're going to look uh, at or watch a video on OERs, the five R's and open uh, licenses. So everything I just went over wrapped up in a great little five minute video. So let's um, watch. OER, the five R's and Creative Commons licenses. David Wiley wrote about the five R's of open when he published his original work defining the open in open content and open educational resources. His work was published with a Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 license. This means it can be used, and in this case, adapted and remixed, as long as we give credit to him for the original work. The five R's include retain, the right to make, own, and control copies of the content, reuse, the right to use the content in a wide range of ways, Revise, the right to adapt, adjust, modify, or alter the content itself. Remix, the right to combine the original or revised content with other open content to create something new. Redistribute, the right to share copies of the original content, your revisions or your remixes with others. The 5R visual used in this video was created by the State University of New York's OER Services. The visual was shared using the same license David Wiley used. It too was used, adapted, and remixed, and the creator has been given credit. Creative Commons licenses often accompany open educational resources. The license associated with a resource guides which of the five R's of open you can engage in with regard to the resource. Adopt OER. Let's say you found a resource developed by someone else and it suits your objectives perfectly. You would like to start using it right away and you don't want to change a thing. You want to retain, reuse, and redistribute the work. All licenses require that you credit the original creator. With CC BY Attribution, that is all that is required of you, so it is the most open of all the licenses. CC BY SA means by attribution and share alike. In other words, you must credit the creator and share the resource as it was shared with you. Some licenses include ND, which means no derivatives. Others include NC, which means that the resource was not intended for commercial purposes or monetary compensation. Adapt OER. Now, imagine discovering an OER that has many of the elements you were looking for, but misses the mark on some others, so you are hoping that you can adapt it. You intend to modify, alter, customize, and change it. You get the idea. Lauren Anstey was the original creator of the video Adopt, Adapt, Create, which I adapted to make this video. YouTube allows users to mark their videos with a Creative Commons CC BY license, which is what Lauren did. Now, let's take the idea of Adapt a little bit further and say that during your search, you located a couple of other resources that would complement the adaptation of the original resource you found. So now it is your intention to embark on a remix of several open educational resources. You'll need to look for licenses that allow for all five R's because you want to retain an original, reuse parts of it, revise other sections, and remix elements of other resources with it. You intend to redistribute the revised and remixed works. In other words, you are going to share the resulting derivative work. You'll need to stay away from Creative Commons licenses that include ND because ND stipulates that the work be passed along unchanged and in whole, no derivatives. And remember, when you see SA associated with an open resource, plan to share your derivative in the same way that the original was shared with you. 
Create OER. Now imagine you've searched and searched Creative Commons licensed resources and nothing suits you. You've decided to create new content. Your work will grow through your own expertise and intellectual engagement or through a collaboration with your students. When it is complete, you'll need to decide how your work will be shared by considering the following questions. Will you allow adaptations of your work? Do you want adaptations to be shared in the same way that you shared? Will you allow commercial uses for your work? Your answers will help you zero in on the right Creative Commons license for you. My choice for this video, CC by Attribution. For more information, visit creativecommons.org slash choose. Okay. All right. Any questions about that video? At the end of the video, she mentioned uh, Creative Commons slash choose. So Creative Commons has an attribution builder on their website. It's really nice, very easy to use. And it has a series of five different yes and no questions to help you decide if you're undecided to help you decide which Creative Commons uh, license is for you. So at the end of that, those five yes, no questions, it'll give you the license that best fits your answers or your uh, desires for your um, materials. All right, so let's go ahead and continue. And we're going to look at the differences of OER and open resources. So what are some differences between OERs and open resources? So the chief difference between open resources and OERs is that users have the ability to retain, reuse, revise, remix, and redistribute. So remember those licenses that we looked at? Some of those licenses are very restrictive. So the ones towards the bottom, so let's go back to that chart. Oops, there it is. So these licenses at the bottom, they are considered open resources, but they're not considered open uh, creative commons, op uh, or I'm sorry, they don't contain the five R's. So they are free to use, right? You can still re, um, you could still use those resources. You just can't make any changes to those resources, right? So that's what that definition uh, means here, okay? So you, in order for, uh, OER to be a true OER, it has to contain the five R's, okay? Um, so what are OER and how are OER different from other resources? So OERs have general rights for copying and repurposing that make OER different from other educational resources available online free of charge. So free materials and courses such as MOOCs allow users only fair use rights or rights stated and specifically licensed issued by the publisher, okay? So these types of resources you can still use in your classroom. You just wouldn't be able to, uh, more, more than likely you wouldn't be able to remix them or change them, okay? Most of them cannot be legally copied and users cannot create their own courses based on them or update them if a mistake has been found. Not that, <clears throat> not that is without explicit agreement from the copyright owner, okay? So here on the third bullet point, we're talking about copyrighted materials, right? Now at my district, we use a copyrighted book for our uh, lower level ESL students. So there's a book called Ventures that we use. And since my district purchased licenses for Ventures to be used in Canvas, our faculty can 
upload uh, the ventures modules into Canvas because they have that agreement with the copyright owner. Okay, so it is possible, um, but that agreement usually means a cost, right? Um, which that was the case for, for our district. In the case of open educational resources, all users are given the, the rights above without needing to request permission from the copyright holder. So that's one of the advantages of the Creative Commons licenses is that the author has already spelled out for you how they would like you to use their works, either with CC BY, meaning it's open, you can do whatever you want with it as long as you give me credit for it, or with the restrictive license where some of them say no derivatives, no changes, or non-commercial, you cannot make a profit off of it, okay? So the user's rights are clearly specified under the Creative Commons licenses and easily understandable. So most OER materials are published under free Creative Commons licenses or as public domain. Okay, so we're gonna look a little bit at what public domain means. So public domain versus open license. Okay, so if some uh, resource is identified as public domain, that means the copyright ownership is waived. So there is no copyright attached to a resource that is identified as public domain. The author gives away their right to the public to reproduce and redistribute creative works also with something that is in the public domain, uh, since they are giving up and waiving their ownership, you don't have to attribute it back to the original owner. You could, I always do, um, and I do it for two purposes, so that if someone wants to know where I retrieved that resource from, like that image that someone asked me about earlier in the presentation, um, you know, there's a direct link, and I don't forget where I retrieved that information. And also just, it just kind of doesn't feel right to me not to give the original author credit. So anything in the public domain, the owner, that the most important thing is the owner gives, waives their copyright. With the open license, those, so those are those six Creative Commons licenses, the copyright ownership is retained, okay? So even though I license my work with the least restrictive license, which is CC BY, I'm not giving up my copyright. I still own the copyright to that original material. I'm just illustrating or I'm explaining exactly how I want downstream users to use my materials. So the author grants broad rights to the public to reproduce and redistribute their uh, creative works. Okay, any questions about public domain and Creative Commons license work? Diana, just a, <clears throat> a comment from Duran. Um, mm -hmm. I believe this comment refers to the open license or the CC licenses that you've been talking about. Mm -hmm. So, um, her uh, Duran's comment was, um, it's also <laughs> also a CYA showing you have the right to use it. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. So that comment was in reference to public domain, um, ah. putting putting the attribution for public domain. People, if you don't put it there, then they don't know whether or not you had permission. So if you Correct. say it's public domain and I got it from here, then you have essentially CYA so that no one will come behind you and say, oh, you stole that image from somewhere. Right. And all of the licenses, uh, Creative Commons licenses, including uh, public domain, if you'll be able to retrieve those from the Creative Commons website, and there's a direct link to the definition, which is really nice. So whenever you attribute work, you're right, it's a CYA because you are directly linking to the definition. You kind of washed your hands of that for downstream users. 
The other thing with that, I um, thank you for bringing that up, is that there are many copyrighted materials out on the internet, right? And you don't know unless you look at the terms of use or unless it's licensed or unless it has some kind of logo, you don't know if it is copyrighted or not. So that's always my concern um, when I talk to faculty and I'm trying to help them um, you uh, find materials online that are OERs. I, uh, the first thing I show them is where to look because Sometimes it's not apparent, sometimes it's not on the main page, and the terms of use is usually where we find it, or the about section, if they don't have a terms of use, the about section might spell it out. Um, but yeah, that's one of the concerns with um, ma so many materials being online now, is not knowing if it's if, if somewhere down the line, it had a copyright logo and someone uploaded it without that logo, that's kind of scary too. Okay, thank you, Diana. And thank you, Duran, for clarifying mm -hmm. uh, my mistake there. And then we do have a question, Diana, from Austin. So mm -hmm. OER are open license, not public domain, correct? Correct. So these are different. There's public domain, which is actually a C with a circle around it. It looks like copyright. It's a CO, sorry, not just a C. The C is copyright, but it's a C and a zero. And that stands for a public domain. And the open licenses are the Creative Commons licenses that the six that we just went over that all start with the CC BY. So yes, these are two uh, distinct types of materials. Okay, thank you. I think we're good for questions now. Okay, thanks. All right. Um, so we're going to watch another video called Want to Work Together. And notice that this has the Creative Commons logo up on top. This was created by Creative Commons. Um, so let's watch. <laughs> When you share your creativity, you're enabling people anywhere to use it, learn from it, and be inspired by it. Take the teacher who shapes young minds with work and wisdom from around the globe, and the artist who builds beauty out of bits and pieces she finds online, and the writer whose stories use ideas and images crafted by people you've never even met. These people know that when you share your creative wealth, you can accomplish great things. They and millions of other people all around the planet are working together to build a richer, better, more vibrant culture using Creative Commons. To understand Creative Commons, you need to know a little bit about how copyright works. Did you know that when you create something, anything, from a photograph, to a song, to a drawing, to a film, to a story, you automatically own an all rights reserved copyright to that creativity. It's true. Copyright protects your creativity against uses you don't consent to. But sometimes full copyright is too restrictive. What about when you want all those millions and millions of people out there to use your work without the hassle of coming to you for permission? What if you want your work to be freely shared, reused, and built upon by the rest of the world? Luckily, there's an answer. Creative Commons. We provide free copyright licenses you can use to tell people exactly which parts of your copyright you're happy to give to the public. It's easy. It only takes a minute and it's totally free. Just come to our website and answer a few quick questions like, will you allow commercial uses of your work? And will you allow your work to be modified? Based on your answers, we'll give you a license that clearly communicates what people can and can't do with your creativity. You don't give up your copyright, you refine it so it works better for you. Welcome to a new world where collaboration rules. It didn't even exist just a few years ago, but now there are millions and millions of songs, pictures, videos, and written works available to share, reuse, and remix, all for free. Want to work together? Then join the Commons, Creative Commons. OK, 
Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and continue. Any questions? Diana, just a co comment from Austin. Um, mm -hmm. You said that uh, some companies force employees to turn their copyright ownership of their ideas to the company. Mm -hmm. Yes, it depends on the their their work contract, right? And the same goes for um, works that we as instructors that we are paid for by the district to create. So for example, I am in a um, grant right now, and that grant was provided by the district. And there are four uh, instructors that got together and we're revising and remixing a work. We're getting paid for that. So since we are getting paid for it by the district, now the district owns that material. Our names will still be on it as creators, as authors of the new work, but the district does own that work. So it really depends on your contract with your district or your employer. Um, so you want to be very clear about that. Mm -hmm. Any so, other questions? Diana, sorry. So then a follow-up question from Austin. Um, so with that example, could you use the material from that in a new project with a different employer? That's a good question. And I would ask my employer <laughs> because it depends on how you were paid and it depends on the stipulations of that contract. So it really, it depends. It's, it's, it's unique for every individual contract that you enter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Diana. So I think we're good for questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead Whoops, and continue. So now let's look at copyright. So what is copyright? And this comes from the US Copyright Office. So copyright is a type of intellectual property that protects original works of authorship as soon as an author fixes the work in a tangible form of expression. So like um, the, the person mentioned in the video, as soon as you create something, whether it's a piece of music, it's a picture, um, something written that's, a, that's in a tangible form, and you automatically own copyright. So in copyright law, there are a lot of different types of works, including paintings, photographs, illustrations, musical compositions, sound recordings, computer programs, books, poems, blog posts, movies, architectural works, plays, and so much more. So once you create an original work and fix it, like taking a photograph, writing a poem or blog, or recording a, a new song, you are the author and the owner. Okay, so that's really important for us to understand, because in the past, um, there were different means of, of obtaining copyright, and some of them were costly, right? You would have to hire an attorney or someone that is, uh, it's usually a copyright attorney. Or um, I've also heard things like people would email themselves their transcript, or, you know, manuscript or something like that. Um, so there were different ways that people tried to kind of gain or that copyright. But in reality, um, now, um, once you, once it's tangi uh, created in a tangible form, you own that copyright. Okay. All right. So let's continue. We're going to watch this short video on copyright. And let's go ahead and start. Sorry, the beginning is just music. <laughs> These are Jack and Meg White, also known as the White Stripes. 
They're a band from Detroit. They make rock and roll without a bass guitarist. This is Steve McDonald of the veteran band Red Cross. Steve thought the White Stripes could use a bass player, so he appointed himself. He took the White Stripes album called White Blood Cells and re-recorded it, laying a bass track down on every song. Then he released the results as MP3s on Red Cross's website. He even made up a new album cover and title, Red Blood Cells. McDonald began putting these copyrighted songs online without permission from the White Stripes or their record label. During the project, he bumped into Jack White, who gave him spoken assent to continue. It can be that easy when you skip the intermediaries. The collaboration across space and time. Creative co-authorship with people you've never met. Standing on the shoulders of your peers. It's what the internet is all about. It can be that easy when you skip the intermediaries. But couldn't it be easier still? Not many of us are liable just to bump into Jack White and get the green light. And he's not going to let just anyone play the bass over his songs in any case. But what about other artists who might want you or me to play along? Shouldn't we be able to, if they don't mind? Enter one of the Internet's most famous citizens. A face familiar to the world over, a public identity rivaled only by a handful of corporate giants and global superstars, the Big Copyright C. Everyone knows what Big C stands for. Big C means all rights reserved. Big C means ask permission. Big C protects copyright owners and notifies the rest of us of their ownership. Time was when you had to put Big C on anything you wanted to copyright or else it entered the public domain. The commons of information where nothing is owned and all is permitted. You had to put the world on notice to warn them. That was Big C's job. And it was a useful one. What changed? The law. By the late 1980s, U.S. law had changed so that works become copyrighted automatically the moment they're made. The moment you hit save on that research paper, the second the shutter snaps closed, the instant you lift your pen from that cocktail napkin doodle, your creation is copyrighted, whether Big C makes a cameo or not. So suddenly, there's no quick way of knowing whether something's owned or not. The new rules may be clear about how you get to own a work. You don't have to do anything but they say nothing at all about how you should go about announcing that you want to allow certain uses of your work. So what? Well, if you're a digital filmmaker whose every frame must be cleared by an army of lawyers before making the cut, or if you're in a band whose label won't let you put a song on a file-sharing network, or if you're a professor trying to put together online course materials, or if you're a DJ chasing down permission to use every snippet of song in your sonic collage. If you're one of these people, then you know, so what? We interrupt this brainstorm to call the lawyers. You drop what you're doing and call all the lawyers. You ask for permission, even to use a work whose author doesn't mind if you use it, because you have no idea what the author's intent is. You ask for permission, even to share some of your rights. Or you venture forward unsure what your risks and rights are exactly. Or, in a haze of legal doubt, you do nothing. Bottom line, Big C is out of a job. The middlemen are not. Enter Creative Commons. Creative Commons wanted to find an easy way to help people tell the world up front that they want to allow some uses of their work. We called the experts, the U.S. Copyright Office, for advice. Their response? There's no real answer. Get creative. So we got creative. How? Our CC brand marks works that are governed by Creative Commons licenses. A set of standardized copyright licenses available free of charge on our website. We wrote these licenses so that lawyers and courts could read them. Then we translated them into a language you can read. And then we translated them into a language computers can read. Now, CC isn't meant to compete with copyright, but to complement it. It allows you to retain your copyright while granting the world permission to make certain uses of it upon certain conditions. 
If the big C is like a red light, then CC is a green light. If the big C says no trespassing, the double C says please come in. If the big C says all rights reserved, CC says some rights reserved. So you can use the powers of the net to find works free to share and build upon and to invite other people to transform or trade yours so that you can get creative, not only with what you make, but how you make it available. So you can collaborate across space and time. So you can be a co-author with someone you've never met. So you can stand on the shoulders of your peers, all without asking permission, because permission has already been granted. Creative Commons. Get creative. It's easy when you skip the intermediaries. Okay. Any questions about that video or what you heard? <clears throat> so Diana, there, I think there have been a couple questions just about copyright. So, mm -hmm. um, so Austin asked, in theory, I could come up with a good exercise for my lessons, tell someone else, that person writes it down, and then they own the copyright, correct? Yes. <laughs> if you didn't, so the definition, right, if we go back to the copyright office, is fixing that idea in a tangible expression. And it doesn't mean that that person would not get sued. Um, so remember, Facebook kind of started that way, right? It was friends talking about this idea. Someone put it in a tangible form and didn't include all the friends that had that idea. So yes, that can happen, but does it mean that you would lose copyright if you have a good attorney? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just making that up. But no, but that did happen with with Facebook, right? And the original owners. So yes, okay. the important important thing is based on the US Copyright Office definition, right? Um, because if it ever went into a legal battle, they'd probably fall back, have you fall back on that definition of a tangible form. And a tangible form of expression is not limited to what I listed here. So. Okay, and then one more question from Harold. Um, so to clarify, you have to register any work in order, uh, you have to register any work in order to buy or own the copyright, correct? And the form is filled out on the US copyright website, correct? That is one way to protect yourself, but the new definition is right here, straight from the US Copyright Office, and there's a link to it. Um, so it, it's best if you do follow that format, right? Because then you're following the steps to actually have it out there somewhere that you've um, you've fixed it in this tangible form of expression, but it's not necessary because as, as soon as I take a picture with my camera, I own the copyright to that picture without having to um, fill out the necessary paperwork. Okay. But yep. if it's that important, I would. <laughs> <laughs> right, part of our part of our society, yes. society right? Um, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think we're good for questions, Diana. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's get through this now. This video, only because we only have about twenty minutes, maybe I'll come back to it. But this is a great video created by an attorney. He does have a series of these. This uh, 
version is on copyright exceptions and fair use. Okay, so he goes even deeper into copyright. So um, it's 12 minutes, so I'm not going to show it here, but I did want to include it. And then you'll have the link once you click on it to this site called um, Crash Course. And all of his uh, videos are on copyright, but he is an attorney, so he can he has some additional uh, information and things he can talk about that I am, I do not have uh, a legal uh, degree on. <laughs> um, so yes, I recommend his videos. They're fun to watch. He's, he's funny. He's, he has a very dry, sarcastic humor, but they're fun to watch. So I recommend watching his videos. All right, so we're going to look at uh, identifying OERs. So like I mentioned earlier, if I don't see a license, uh, one of the Creative Commons license or the public domain logo or copyright logo, then I'm going to go to the terms of use. Now, even when I see a copyright logo, I still go to the terms of use because many times um, we're educators, right? Everybody in this room is educators or are linked to education. Many times in the terms of use, there is something spelled out for educators. So don't be uh, discouraged if you see the copyright logo on a site or material um, that's posted online. Go to the terms of use and um, Sometimes they spell things out for educational purposes. This can be downloaded. This book can be used. This worksheet can be used. But they'll tell you typically if it has a copyright, you cannot make any changes, but you can use it and you can uh, uh, use it in your classroom. Um, so terms of use is, is typically what I look at or the section that says legal because that's where they spell out how they want you to use or not use their materials. The about section of a website, sometimes they have a fair use link and, and what they mean by fair use. Um, sometimes it'll have a link that says license. Um, so any of these um, will usually spell out how they want you to use or not use their materials or their site. Um, there are some great repositories. My two go-to are uh, Merlot and OER Commons. Um, both of these sites share some of the same resources. I'm going to show you both sites and why I like uh, Merlot and OER Commons. One of the things that I can tell you about OER Commons is that they have uh, an adult education filter, which Merlot doesn't yet, but I'm sure they will add it soon because Merlot is very robust. But both of these are sites that um, they're like giant libraries of OER and zero textbook cost materials. Um, other sites that I like to use, and these are specific for images, are Pixabay, Unsplash, Open Clip Art um, is another great one. Noun Project has a lot of uh, clip art that's also um, open to use and, and designated with a Creative Commons license. And then if you're looking for open access books, so zero textbook cost books that you want to use at your district uh, and openly licensed books, BC Open Ed is a great resource. And this is from Canada, British Columbia, and they are leaps and bounds ahead of us on open educational resources. So they have lots and lots of resources. Also, um, if you're looking at different states, the state of Washington, the state of Oregon, and the state of Texas are big advocates of OER. So if you go to their educational uh, websites and their um, um, I'm thinking like their version of SCOE, <laughs> um, they will have lots and lots of materials, those um, states that I mentioned. Uh, OpenStax has some great resources for, I would say for 
um, high school diploma, GED, because these are very K through 12 um, types of topics. So they have some great math, history, um, uh, those types of books, and they are open. And Press Books Directory has tons of open, uh, openly licensed books, okay? Those are just some of many, but some of my go-to. So um, let's take a quick tour of Merlot. Um, so Merlot is this giant repository of open educational resources. Um, the there are several other repositories. Um, the nice thing about Merlot is they really do try very hard to vet some of these materials, not just by the user, um, but also um, academic uh, uh, vetting as well. Okay, so um, when you link, go to their site, you will see the search bar here where you can begin your search. You'll also um, see how many materials they are and these numbers are always growing. So they have over 100,000 uh, resources. They have over 200,000 registered members, over 4,000 institutions and over 500 recent contributions. Now with these sites, I recommend, whether it's Merlot or OER Commons, to create an account so you can sign up for free. And this is the reason why, because when I am in here looking for resources, I can download tons and tons of things and eat up my memory in my computer. Or if I create an account, I can add it to my cloud account for free. So I can start creating my little library on their site. And then once I'm ready to download it, I did create a site for our faculty. So once I kind of vet it um, and feel that it would be a good resource for our faculty, then I download it to our site. Um, so just a heads up on the sign up and the sign up is free. Um, on this web on their website, you'll also see community, and this is for academic discipline portals. So, if you want to connect with other faculty or other sites in your discipline, that's available for you as well. Um, academic support is available for you. Academic partners and members around the world. So, other countries as well are using open educational resources and sharing. So it's kind of neat uh, to connect with people all over the world and that are willing and ready to share their resources with you. Okay, so again, you can browse down here. There's another opportunity to browse or you can add your materials to the Merlot site. So once you decide you want to uh, share with others, this is a great platform to share um, your resources. Okay, they have a nice content builder. So if you do decide you want to share your resource, they have this nice template uh, for you to add your resource and the license you want to use, descriptions, tags. It's and they have a nice tutorial on how to use it. Okay, and then of course they. They prefer that you, or they want you to sign up, um, but you can use this site without signing up. All right, so let's go to the top. I teach ESL reading, so I'm just going to do a search for ESL reading. And you just type your topic and then you press search. So when I do that, um, it gives me 24 on this page of 194 results in the Merlot collection. Okay, so there's a couple things you wanna look at. You wanna look at the, the tabs going across the top once you do your search. And then you want to look at the filters on the far left-hand side, okay? So um, when I want to do a search, um, I want to start adding filters if I see anything over 50, because that's kind of a lot of resources to take a look at, okay? So we'll look at the filters in just a moment. I want to show you these cards. So the resources that popped up 
uh, pop up on these cards and at a glance, I could see the name of the resource, maybe the company or person uh, that created it, some kind of logo or uh, clip art like this one tells me this is probably a book here. Um, it tells gives me a brief description, the type of material, who the author is, when it was created, and when it was modified, and if there's some kind of review. So here it has an editor review, which is an academic review. So this first one has just the editor review. The second resource has an editor review and also a user rating. So actual users, maybe other teachers that are using it. Um, and then some of these are not um, reviewed yet. Okay. Um, so I am curious without adding filters about this. So we're going to take a look at that one. So hopefully it's still there after I filter. <laughs> so there are some filters here you can uh, start filtering. So if you have too many resources and you want maybe only animations, it'll tell you in parentheses how many uh, there are. So there's only one of these. Um, so these are the different types of filters you can start adding on. And the nice thing is it will tell you in parentheses how many there are of these. So if I'm only looking for quizzes, yay, I can review three quizzes, no problem. That will just take me a few minutes. You can also filter by your audience. Okay, so notice that they don't have the adult education filter yet. Um, but when, when I'm looking at Merlot, um, depending, I teach advanced ESL. So I will click on both high school and college. Oops, once I click it, it reduces. So here's high school, it reduced it to 67. Um, I can add college, general ed, lower division, upper division. So if I do college, lower division, yep, so now I added back on. Okay. Um, so depending on what I choose, it's either going to subtract or add on my audience. I can also um, look for Android or Apple friendly materials. Okay. And if I want to make sure that has a Creative Commons license on it, I can click that. And so now I have 13. Oh, my book disappeared. That's okay. Let me add the high school or remove the high school. Oh, it disappeared. That's okay. I'll look for it later. <laughs> um, but these are materials that have the Creative Commons license on, on them. So that's really nice. Okay. And now I only have 27 to look at. So that's, that's a nice number. Okay, so here are some short stories, which I love short stories for my students. I'm going to take a look at this. If I want to look at this resource a little bit further, I just click on the card. And again, it'll give me some of the same information that was on the card, the type of material. It'll give me a little bit more information because now we're on a page. And um, sometimes it will give me other suggestions to look at or other materials created by the same author. Okay, so I'm still not in the resource yet. If I say, okay, this all looks good. All right, uh, non-commercial, no problem. I'm just using it in my classroom. I want to look at the materials. So now I'm going to click on go to the to material. It's going to tell me I'm leaving Merlot because this is housed somewhere else. And now I am in the resource. So it's nice because this author has all these beautiful subheadings. Uh, there's a PDF version, a Word version, because remember, I can revise this material, right? It has the CC by NC. It doesn't have the ND. So if I want to revise or just take pieces of this chapter, I can. Okay. Any questions on Merlot? Okay, so let's quickly go to OER Commons. And OER Commons is very similar to the look of Merlot, maybe not as busy. 
but it has many of the same if you want to collaborate with others connect with others that's all there for you um, but let's do a quick oh there's also they also have an open author where if you want to upload uh, materials you can and they have a nice five minute video that shows you how to do that um, so let's go ahead and look for my same ESL reading um, here I can add the educational level that I want and there is adult education. So if I only want to look for materials for adult education, I can add that filter here, or I usually don't add the filter up front. I'll add it once I get to my resource page. So I'm just gonna leave it there. I just wanted to show you it is up front, but you, if you forget to add it or um, you want to filter, uh, what's available, then um, you can also add it on this next page. Okay, so now I didn't have the filter other than the topic of ESL reading. So I have 268 uh, resources. So now I can add my educational level here with these, these drop down arrows. So if I choose adult education, now I only have 68. That's a little bit more um, better. I can also look at license types. So Merlot just had Creative Commons license with um, um, OER Commons. You can add unrestricted use, only sharing permitted, conditional remixing. Okay, so if I want unrestricted, that's either public domain or Creative Commons or CC BY the least restrictive license, I can add that. And I can add public domain. And oops, let me take off public domain, it added some on there. Okay, there we are 27. So all of these are CC by and if I want, again, it gives me these cards with the license, brief explanation. I always like to look at when it was added. I like looking at newer resources since I'm in here a lot. If I want to look at the resource, I just click on the title or the card. And similar to Merlot, it gives me a little bit more information, some tag words, and um, no sometimes there will be other recommendations at the at the bottom um, on oer commons if that's a resource you like you can add it directly to uh, if you use google classroom you can add it there or you can share it out here it also tells you how many people have viewed it how many people have saved it and if there are any comments so if i want to look at the resource i choose view resource and here is the resource. So this one happens to be a lesson plan. And there is some information. If I want to download it, I can download it. If I only want to view it, I can just choose view. OK, so that was a quick, quick uh, view of uh, OER Commons, OK? All right, so we are at the end of our webinar today. Um, so we went over the characteristics of OERs and the five, o, five R's of the OERs, Creative Commons licenses. We went over some differences between OERs and other types of resources. We went over copyright, I briefly went over copyright, and then we went over identifying OERs. And just to let you know, there are some additional resources, direct links here for some of the um, resources that I talked about. I didn't talk about this OER toolkit, but it was shared with me, so I'm sharing it out with you. Lots and lots of links in this OER toolkit. So if you're just getting started, or if you have an OER librarian or a librarian at your site or OER uh, coordinator like me, um, that is a great uh, resource for um, your faculty or, or just you uh, if you want to take a look at that. Lots of resources in that toolkit.